Okay, story behind this piece of fabric, which is this big, um, is I got it in when I was traveling through India and um, it became an uh, a, well, it now sort of is a symbol of um, a very romantic love affair. Um, I met a boy over there and we travelled, I travelled on the back of an Enfield through the Himalayan mountains and this garment was used at outdoor raves as a headband, it possibly even a boob tube and um, Quite often, if I was staying in a um, unesthetically pleasing environment, I would use blue tack and hang it up on the wall. I love the idea of trading. Um, I'm half Middle Eastern and come from a family of bartering, so <laughs> um, the trade is um, yeah, it, it's it's a good process. Um, I feel really good about it. It's kind of nice knowing that you give something over and um, yeah that it will be transformed it will it has another life beyond mine and I get something that most likely has a history or um, yeah new significance to me it was a garment that's sentimental and has a story and history to it I hope that it enjoys its new life. It's going to take on a new existence. This that I don't have is a cardigan that I got in Estonia when I was on exchange with Claire. And we got it from Pavli Kulkeskus, our favourite op shop. Tram number four. Uh, it was a little bit far away, but the best op shop I've ever been to. And it had this special room to the side where you could get three items for one euro. Bargain. <laughs> and it was a really gaudy, awful yellow cardigan with big black screen printed abstract circle things on it. But it looked really happy and I thought, mm, three for a euro, <laughs> no big loss. <laughs> um, so I got it and I wore it probably once. It's kind of too hideous to wear but kind of cool. And I felt a bit guilty because I never really uh, wore it. When I left, the person that I had been seeing in Estonia really liked it and was quite attached to it. And he asked if, I could, if he could keep it. And I kind of sneakily avoided the matter and then took it home. <laughs> And ever since I felt so guilty that he wanted it all that time and I took it home because I kind of loved it even though it was gross and I've never worn it and it just sits in my in my wardrobe I have like a happy section and then just a black section it just sits there looking happy unused and it's probably the only piece of clothing that I feel like I should give away because <laughs> everything else I'm too attached to. The dress was a dress I wore as a bridesmaid for my auntie and uncle when they were married probably in 1959, 1960, so I would have been five or six. I've always had it, we always wore it. I wore it when I was little and then when my children were little about that size they always wore it as a dress up. So it's quite stained and marked from all the times that it's been dragged around the house as part of the costume um, bin that we always had. I chose this piece because um, it's got so many memories attached to it. I always think of my grandmother. My, I'm not quite sure if my mother or my grandmother made it. My, both of them were beautiful um, seamstress and sewed a lot for us as children. So I've always been attached to it because I knew that it came from um, from them making from them making it and their their handworks in it and because I do the same sort of thing I felt that it was just passing it on 
So I've always looked after it, but it's got to the stage now where it's deteriorating. So I thought that it would be lovely for Claire to use it. Well, I'm just happy that it's going to be reused by another set of hands and made into something else. This was the outfit um, that I was given just before I saw my very first dead body. Um, I was in Ghana um, and two weeks before we arrived, one of the most popular teachers there um, had a heart attack and died. Um, and the funerals don't usually happen for about a month afterwards. So they had two weeks to prepare this lovely ensemble for me. Um, but as you can see, it's um it's pretty hot. <laughs> I think it's made out of like lino or something. Um, so on the day that the funeral happened, we were all sweating pretty profusely. There was four of us in identical outfits. Um, and anyway, as a sign of respect, when we got there, we had to go in and um, pay our respects to the body. And I hadn't seen one before, so I was a little bit nervous. And what was happening was there was a little white tent up at the very um, at the front of where the ceremony was being held and all of these people were walking in slowly to the tent where the body was and then just coming out wailing and lying on the ground and wailing um, and so that really helped build up the anticipation and so we walked in um, and I was all prepared but then there was nobody in there um, the only person in there was this man who was sitting on a desk writing down what I thought was people's names as they were coming in. I thought it was like a guest book. So I looked around to try and find where the body was, where I should be putting my respects. Um, but then I noticed that everybody was lying down and wailing towards this man who was sitting at the desk. And turns out that um, when people die in Ghana, they present the body in a way that resembles the, their life. And as he was a teacher, this was the dead man and they'd set him up to be marking students' papers. And he looked so alive, <laughs> even though he was dead. <laughs> Um, and everybody was crying and then we walked out and that was the day that I got to wear this outfit. Oh, Clement Hartle is going to take me out um, on a night dancing and teach me some of her moves. As an economist, um, I believe <laughs> trades are highly essential, um, but I like this idea of um, being able to trade anything you like and I think it captures that people place different values on lots of different things um, and that you can train everything. The story behind the piece is um, it was a dress I bought a long time ago when I was a student for very cheap um, and it soon came to have a very big reputation of being a dress that allowed you to be very successful in kissing boys. Um, we would often swap dresses, all of us girls, because um, we had lots of nights out together. And um, yeah, if you wore the grey dress, you would um, yeah, most likely uh, end up kissing a boy in the evening. And so yeah, it was very popular due to that reason. So that's the story behind the piece. Yeah, it's not something that I really wear anymore. It's sort of part of my past history, but um, yeah, it's something that I wanted to maybe keep the story going. So that's why I chose it. It's the story. Well, those, uh, those socks, I made those socks. I made those socks for Nick. They were the first adult socks that I ever knitted. They were knitted from my grandmother's um, pattern book and she had she had passed away at that time and they were from 1920s pattern book. I didn't know what sort of um, yarn I'd have to buy for them but um, I had some scrap wool and, and I thought I know I'll nick, nick some socks and I did. They were his socks hmm. but he doesn't wear them. I do. <laughs> did. <laughs> I don't <anymore. laughs> I, It was like giving away um, uh, something that I'd felt uh, of my grandmother and I've been thinking about this prior to the interview and it's like um, I'm giving away the guilt that I felt for not going to my grandmother's funeral. She was my first grandmother who died and um, I was heavily pregnant at the time with Angus, my first and I didn't think I could go over it and I didn't think I wanted to cope 
or I didn't think I could cope with the family because I knew that it would be sort of because there's ten children, ten. Yeah, my mum has nine brothers and sisters, so there would have been a lot of guilt and and grumbling and and harassment, and I just didn't want to deal with it, so I didn't go. So there was a lot of guilt. So I'm giving this to give away that guilt, basically. I love. I, 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 I love one of Claire's bags. That's what I love. Of trade? Um, I think that's a great idea. Um, although, I, I wonder, and I certainly know with this particular trade, that I'm getting the better deal. <laughs> and I think that's what happens with trade, that one person gets a better deal than another person. But I think it's a better way to live than, than money. A lot of the time, yeah. Okay, so I got it when I was in first year uni, and when I saw it hanging in the shelf, I just thought, oh my god, I love this dress. It's for me, and I tried it on, and I just fell in love with it because I love spots, and I had spots, different colours, and I had the Peter Pan collar, which I also loved. So. I was very excited when I bought that one. And I've worn it to first dates, I've worn it to the beach, I've worn it to festivals, I've worn it overseas. It's traveled to Indonesia and Malaysia, lots of different places. So it's very well worn. And giving it away was very tough <laughs> because I was so in love with it. Even though I don't wear it as much anymore, it was hard to hand over. And I cannot wait to go and see all the different stories and all the different pieces that come out of it. I wouldn't have minded just giving the dress, but the trade, it's a nice idea, I like that. I think people would be happy. So the top I have given you is um, a little top I got at some fancy designer second hand shop. Um, and I really love the patterns and the um, kind of embellishment and embroidery of the um, yeah, of parts of it. I'm not really so keen on colour, um, but yeah, it was for the wedding and it was a great wedding and now it doesn't fit me, it's a bit small, so yeah, that's the story behind that, that beautiful piece. I think the idea of a trade is a great idea. Um, having done a project that kind of is looking at alternative economies myself, I think that Jaws embracing this kind of approach to, um, I don't know, how objects are traded in life. Um, it's wonderful, I've just done a, a trade with a photographer for some earrings for some photography. So I think the more of this that we can promote, um, the better for everybody. Yeah. So we've decided to do a trade of, um, I'm hoping a couple of succulents, and I've brought along my book um, of cacti and succulents, and um, yeah, because I collect them, so yeah, I'm very excited. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to get. It's a bit of a surprise, which is kind of exciting. This story goes back probably over ooh, close to 11 years ago. Um, these pe these jeans were something that obviously I fell madly in love with. And being a girl from Perth, there was only one shop that they could be purchased from. And I went searched high and low until I found them and obviously paid a lot for them. At that time it was probably more than I could afford, but I clearly made sure that I got my wear out of them. So when I saw the call out, um, I just knew that this was the piece that had to go through. It's something that I've clearly had a really hard time letting go of, and I thought, I love jewellery, I love these pieces, this piece of jeans, this pair of jeans, and I thought that seeing knowing and knowing Claire's work that I thought this was this is where they had to go so I just knew um, I think the idea of a trade is something that is quite special um, I think it kind of takes this whole idea of what is preciousness and what makes something of value and makes you question it and I guess for me looking at these jeans now they don't seem to have much value on the surface, they look like a piece of trash, but there's obviously an immense amount of value behind them. Um, and I've done trades with friends before and I just kind of, I don't know, I really like that sort of 
interaction with when it comes to something creative a little bit more than a financial um, price paid. In 2010, I spent the year uh, traveling in Europe and towards the end of the year, um, I found myself in, in Porto, in Portugal, the home of Port. I was looking rather portly um, by this stage. It had been about 11 months in and I was um, in a hostel in Porto and um, I was making my dinner and a, an, an American man walked in um, and we got, we got chatting. Uh, we spent the next day together in, in Porto and then ended up um, traveling together to Madrid for about the next week and, and had a, um, a week together by about day three or four. We were sort of romantically involved. Um, and I didn't really think much of it, but um, as, as I left Madrid, um, something happened which I think uh, kind of put this one, got this one under my skin a little. And I um, had headed to the airport to, to catch a plane to Ireland. And I was just standing in a line um, in the airport early in the morning and I heard this voice behind me sort of saying, oh, excuse me, excuse me. Um, like a loud American pushing through the line and this person pushed in front of me and it, and it was Nick, the man that um, I just spent the past week with. And over the next uh, two years, we sort of had a cyber courtship, um, corresponding first by email and then getting more and more frequent to the point that we were communicating every day. And that's um, when, when we thought that something had to give. Um, so in October last year, um, I flew to Turkey to see a man that I spent a week with um, two years earlier. When I went to Turkey, we decided it was reality and got into a fairly expensive and difficult long distance relationship. Um, so we continued that long distance um, and saw each other again in Sri Lanka at the beginning of this year. Um, and then post Sri Lanka, a decision had to be made about whether one of us was going to move. In the end, it just sort of petered out. I mean, he didn't want to move. He wasn't willing to take the risk. And um, it just sort of ended after this build up of, I guess, fate and chances and things colliding. And so the, um, the boxer shorts were um, a pair of shorts that he gave me in, in Sri Lanka and that I used as, as pajamas. Um, right up until the point that the last time we saw each other. So I would quite like to get rid of them and um, because every time I open the drawer they're just there staring me in the face. So it's been about four months um, since we split up so I'm happy for Claire to take them off my hands. There's a lot of emotions in that item of clothing. So I was in Spain shopping and I found this dress and it was 10 euro but it had a hole in the back where um, the tag had gone and so the sort of the price tag thing had made a bit of a hole and so I was like well you know I want a bit of a discount from that. So I tried to say, I tried to go up to the counter and say can I have a discount um, but the woman didn't speak English and I obviously don't speak any Spanish and so I managed to bargain my way down like I was sort of like you know, look at this, you can see it's got, you know, it's got a rip. Um, and I managed to get one euro off my 10 euro dress. <laughs> uh, so I was pretty pleased with myself. And it also made me realise that, you know, when people always say how the, you know, body language is like 90% of communication. And I was always like, that's bullshit. Like you can write something down, no body language, and you can have the exact same message. But this made me realise that it really is because I managed to have this conversation without being able to speak any Spanish. So, yeah. So I wanted to give something that I wouldn't miss too much. And this dress was only €9, Euro, as you heard from the story. So, um, that was the main reason. I thought that it's kind of replaceable and also um, it's a little bit short. <laughs> I was travelling with two of my very close friends um, in Turkey in 2009, I think, um, it was a while ago. I was with my good friend Jen and um, really good friend Claude who's from Switzerland. And we are travelling through Turkey um, and in Turkey you can only sit um, with a male if you are the male's partner 
Um, so Jen and Claude teamed up and pretended to be boyfriend and girlfriend and I sat next to an elderly Turkish woman and on this um, bus ride the Turkish woman and I tried to have conversations. We were using uh, pictures and body language to, um, you know, talk about each other. And she became quite fond of me and she wrote down her address so that I could keep in contact with her. So I've been in contact with her only a few times. Um, and before we got off the bus, she was very kind and she wanted to give me a gift and she gave me her scarf that she was wearing. So this is the piece that I have given to Claire to um, make a beautiful um, jewellery piece out of. I've kept the scarf for years but I've actually never really worn it. Items have a history and so this woman had this scarf for a while and she wanted to pass it on to me and so now I'm going to pass it to Claire and it's going to be tra transformed into something else. I'm a designer and I have done work for people, um, especially for artists, and I love, it's like a barter system, it's similar to what Claire's doing, and I love it because I've got these beautiful pieces in my home that I did work for, but they mean something to me because it might be a friend of mine who's, it's like a painting or a photograph or something like that. Well, I've given Claire a piece that um, is a really disgusting red polyester dress um, and I wore the dress the first time that I, um, there is no delicate way to put this, picked up my husband, or the man that is now my husband, and I remember I bought it from Vic Market and I thought it was really nice at the time. <laughs> I do not think that anymore <laughs> and I cut a little bit off because I thought it'd be nice on a bit of an angle so I cut the bottom off <laughs> and um, yeah that's the story behind the piece. I've never been able to throw it away but it's I would never wear it again and I just think it would be nice to have it re I guess remade into something that's not horrible. <laughs> It's nice because it has sentimental value, so you're giving something, well mine does, something sentimental and I'll get something in exchange for my stupid sentimentality, so that'll be nice. <laughs> my trade for this piece is that Claire is going to have to come out to my house and help paint 